And here we are, another Power Mondo, where we interview mixed media and fiber and textile artists all around the world. And they have one thing in common. They use a textile hardener called Power Ball. So today we are going to have a fun, fun time. I know we are going to visit Canada and get inspired with art. And of course, have a small tutorial as well, just for you during the next hour. So before we, we act, actually start talking with the artist, I want you to know a few things. So the very important one is that we are live. And the main reason we are live is because we love to interact with you. So whenever you're watching, there is either a comment box or a chat box, either beside or below the video. Use that space to communicate with the artist and ask questions. You know, ask questions, give your two cents about things. We really, really love that. This is an interview. It's open content, so there is nothing about selling here. So make sure you share this with other people. You never know who you're going to inspire to start a new journey. Don't forget to get the link wherever you're watching and posting that as well. You can post on social media. If you see a post, you can comment on that. You can send an email you can even call people but tell them exactly where they can watch uh, this interview pavermondo.com uh, is one of the places you might be watching right now so do two things interact with us right and then share this and wherever you are in, in whatever social media platform you're using please give a like subscribe leave a comment all these things help us a lot actually with visibility and it, you will be happy helping us doing this okay so don't forget to do that either uh, i want to call my my amazing artist today tamara pluggers how are you doing today tamara i am doing wonderful i'm okay. doing wonderful i'm really excited i'm excited too we have a lot of people here watching uh tell me where you are located exactly I'm located in a tiny little village in the region of Niagara. Uh, most people are familiar with Niagara, but uh, Niagara is quite a big region. Most people are familiar with Niagara Falls, uh -huh. but uh, we're in a little town called Jordan Station. Oh, nice. And have you, how long have you lived there? I've lived here actually for 37 years since oh, we got nice. married. My husband and nice. I got married. So. Very cool. Yeah. We have a lot of countries watching you today. I'm going to mention some of them. So it gets you more excited about what we are going to talk today. We, <laughs> we are welcoming today US, UK, Canada, Australia, Tunisia, Germany, Ireland, Greece, Luxembourg, South Africa, and I have a here on the other one, uh, Turkey and Ukraine to this broadcast. So. Thank you, everybody, wow. for being here. Yes. And Tamara, before we actually start our conversation, I want to remind people that on the bottom of the video, you are always going to see three websites. Why? Because Tamara will be talking about the textile hardener that she uses. It's a line of products called Powerpaw. And it's not a, a type of product that you can go to any craft store and buy them. So you need to see who are the distributors in your country. So for example, in the US, you can go to powerpoweamerica.com and you will find the products there. We are actually waiting for the truck to, to arrive in half an hour here with our next shipment. If you are in Canada, Powerpole Niagara, uh, .com is the place for you to go. Go check, it's Tamara's uh, site. And if you are in any other country, go to powerpaw.com, click on distributors, and you are going to find who is responsible for distribution in your country. You're going to get really excited about these products. So make sure you write down those websites and visit them later, okay? So Tamara, tell me one thing. How was your first experience with art? Tell me a little bit about you. Well, uh, my family owned a fabric store. So Ooh. I was literally born with fabric between my fingers. I love fabric. Um, I was taught from a very young age how to differentiate different fabrics, the drape, the contents, yes. the, that sort of thing. And it developed my love affair with fabric, with texture, with an, and with drape. Um, and then, yeah, I became a seamstress, uh, uh -huh. started a, uh, a children's clothing business where I made children's clothing and, wow. um, 
just one thing led to another. And then my family's, unfortunately, my family's business uh, closed in 1997. Uh -huh. And with, with that also, I stopped sewing. My children got older and it got to be the point where uh, sewing was no longer as economical as it used to be. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, I, I've seen a revival of sewing lately. Uh, yes, definitely. So I hope that comes back, right? Because uh, for oh, a while, yeah. you wouldn't find anybody that would know what a sewing machine was. <laughs> <laughs> sad sad thing it is it is and, and from there so the fabric when you start talking about that uh for example i used to work for my uncle and aunt on a on a shop and i remember going the stock area and my uncle would go with me and make me try every fabric and he would say yeah. you can you you can only understand fabric if you touch it right did you have the same experience Oh, yes, yes, for sure. Um, I love and even now, like going into even a clothing store, I have to touch the fabric. Me too. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> Me too. So after the experience with, with working in that environment with fabric uh, from there, how did you get in touch with art and start creating? Well, that's that's an interesting question. So my aunt is a an artist. She's a sculptor. And uh, she lived in the Netherlands for a number of years and actually ended up swapping pieces with the somebody, uh, a paper pole artist. And when my aunt moved back to Canada, she had that uh, piece that she had gotten from the paper pole artist sitting on her mantle. And I saw it there and it was instant love. <laughs> I saw that and I went, I have to learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. So, um, as a child, I would often draw and things like that. Um, I was mediocre. I, I was probably okay, but uh, still working with my fingers, working with my hands, feeling, feeling and touching and draping. And that was my passion. And so when I saw that piece, I was hooked. <laughs> and and that, so on? then she, yeah, from there on, she connected me then with a, um, a distributor from up the Ottawa area. And he gave me the instructor's course and it, the rest is history. And I've just been going gung ho since. How long ago was that? That would be, I think 11 years ago. Wow, nice, nice. And of yes. course we want to see some of the pieces. Brenda Helfrich from South Africa is saying, oh, I'm so excited for this interview. <laughs> Don't forget, Thanks, you can Brenda. use yeah. You can use the comment box or chat box wherever you're watching to interact with the artist. Don't forget to ask some questions. So, Brenda, uh, Brenda, Tamara, uh, could you please show us a couple of pieces that you made? Oh man, that's a tough thing. I I don't know where to start. So um, I will start with this one. This here is a mother and child. Um, I love it. It's. Uh, they're done using, of course, this is a t-shirt. The, the dress is a t-shirt. You'll see it's draped over a piece of wood. And what I did here was I used the paper pole and the art stone and a die to give it that look and that texture there. Um, and then, of course, she's holding her little baby. So that's, that's one that I, I personally, that's a favorite of mine. Um, another one here, this is done using the art stone again and the dye. It's a little bit of a different technique. And what I did here for her head is I used um, a head that my aunt, who had introduced me to power pole originally, that she had created and she uh, generously donated that to my head collection. Mm -hmm. That's that one. Um, another thing that I love to do is um, I take old uh, crochet doilies. Oh, so this one here, this is a doily uh -huh. and I just use that to accent the piece. So this one was made for uh, Canada 150. We had our 150 year celebration, I think in 2019, I believe. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that uh -huh. terrible? I don't know. And yes, tw anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so this piece was, or maybe it's 2017. I think it was 2017. Forgive wow, me, Canada. Wow, that's gorgeous. Uh -huh. so, um, this piece uh, was on a coin, so uh -huh. um, the uh, local post office asked me to make a sculpture 
replicating the image on the coin. So that was that one. So those Very are cool. cute. Yes, just a few. We, we will show more. Rosie Pontilio is saying, I'm wildly curious how the family fabric actors feel about the Hardner fabric art. Could be a lively dinner conversation. Yeah, <laughs> sure. No, they're all they're all excited for me. Oh, so. that's very good. So I know you have prepared for us a video on on uh, a tour to throughout your city, right? So we yes. are going to show it now, and then we'll come back and show a few more of your pieces. Is that okay? Oh, sounds good. Okay, let's do it. Let's watch. Hi, welcome to Niagara. I'm excited to share with you just a little bit about where I live. I believe it is one of the most beautiful places around. Behind me, you'll see the uh, mouth of the Niagara River going into Lake Ontario. On your that side, you will see the U.S. and on that side is Canada. So um, just it is just absolutely gorgeous. Niagara is obviously most well known for being the home of Niagara Falls, but I'm not going to show you Niagara Falls because most of you I'm sure are very, very familiar with that. You can see Niagara Falls wherever just Google Niagara Falls and you can see pictures of it. So I didn't want to be able to I, I, I should say, I didn't want to focus on that today. What I want to do is just show you some of the other beauty that we have in the region of Niagara. I'm going to focus on northern Niagara. Uh, Niagara runs is the peninsula between Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. Lake Erie being on the south, Lake, uh, the tip of uh, Lake Ontario on the north. Uh, Toronto is north, uh, directly north of the tip of the Niagara Peninsula, uh, of Niagara on the Lake, which I'm going to be taking you to as well. Niagara, the region of Niagara consists of a number of different cities, actually five of them. We have uh, the city of Grimsby, Port Colborne, Fort Erie, Welland, Niagara Falls, and St. Catharines. Those are the major cities in the region. Then within that region, there is also a whole lot of little smaller towns. I come from the town of Jordan, which I will be showing you a little bit later. Right now, I want to focus on Niagara-on-the-Lake, the original uh, capital of Canada, Upper Canada. It's where the War of 1812 was fought with the U.S. and Canada won. Woo! Canada won. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just teasing you Americans, but uh, they do say, I think, I do believe that Canada won that war. <laughs> but we love you anyway. Um, yeah, and uh, so I'm going to let you go right now. I'm actually going to turn around so that you can see what's on the other side. And I'm going to take you on our tour. Welcome, enjoy. So here you have the Niagara River. If I head in that direction over there, I'm going to be going through the Niagara Gorge, up through the rapids, and then to Niagara Falls. And Niagara Falls, once you're above Niagara Falls, you will go into, the, into Lake Erie. Before I take you to the main street of Niagara on the Lake, I want to show you one of my most favorite places in this town. It's the Pump House Art Center. This is where I have my favorite art shows around. It's the original uh, pumping station for the town of Niagara on the Lake. A little bit of a history about Niagara on the Lake, I think I mentioned it already, but uh, Niagara on the Lake used to be the capital of Upper Canada uh, back in the 1700s. It is just, uh, it's right at the mouth of Niagara River, where the Niagara River runs into Lake Ontario. I'm walking with you uh, to show you the pump house, to take you to the river. Here at the pump house, they offer art classes, which I teach here as well. They also offer um, cl uh, not classes. Uh, uh, huh. They feature artists for different shows, that sort of thing. So um, my mind went blank there as to how to say that. But anyways, uh, unfortunately, the pump house is closed right now due to COVID. Ontario is in lockdown, unfortunately. Hopefully, Lord willing, we're out of that shortly. But anyways, you can see the Niagara River here. I'm going to walk a little bit faster so that uh, we can get there and I can show you the rest. I absolutely adore this view. This is uh, one of the original lighthouses in the area. Um, but again, on the other side, you can see Lewiston 
Um, over in the distance there, you can see Fort Niagara. That again is the fort where the Battle of 1812 was staged from. And then Fort George on the Canadian side. But uh, you can see there the boat clubs and the Niagara River. I'm going to try and get to, so you can see Lake Ontario off in the distance there. So just a very beautiful, I love, love, love this place. And this is Main Street, Niagara on the Lake. I always tell people if they come and visit me to go visit Niagara Falls and ooh and awe about that for about half a day. And then you have to come to Niagara on the Lake. Niagara on the Lake is like a blast or a step into uh, a time capsule. Wonderful little town. This here is the Prince of Wales Hotel. It was built in the 1800s for the Prince of Wales uh, from England. Beautiful little hotel, or yeah, it's quite a size actually, a hotel. When it is open and running, which it's not right now because of uh, the pandemic, they have high tea every afternoon at three o'clock. You can see the, uh, over here, the clock tower. That again is from the 1800s as well. And right across here is Simcoe Park, a beautiful park where they have concerts and uh, all kinds of different art theatrical events. As I've said to you before, the Niagara region is known for its wineries. And this winery, 13th Street Winery, is probably my most favorite. The owner of 13th Street Winery is a huge supporter of the arts. Throughout his property, which is extensive, he has multiple sculptures from different artists from the Niagara region. You can see them off in the distance. He has an art gallery and he is an avid supporter of us artists. In the spring, twice a year, there's a huge art fest that happens when, when we're not in the middle of COVID. Uh, there is a huge art fest where people from all over Southern Ontario come to this. It's called the Handmade Market. So if you're ever in the Niagara region, you have to just come and check out the 13th Street Winery. And one of my favorites in here, of course, um, I can't, I would be remiss if I didn't introduce to you Tia. Tia is a powerful sculpture that I made a few years back. Um, Tia is T-I-A, which stands for Thankful in Adversity. So here is Tia. She's been up for a few years. Just uh, the owner of the winery asked that I make a sculpture that shows a strong woman um, who can withstand the winds and the storms of life. So that is where Tia came from. once again. So this is the village of Jordan. It's about a kilometer or about a little less than a mile from where I live and where my studio is. This would have been one of the earliest settlements actually in the Niagara region. It's a haven for artists, um, small businesses, boutique uh, businesses uh, over there down where that car is heading is actually an old museum celebrating the history of the area. We have air be uh, bed and breakfasts in this town. It's a very, very quaint town with wonderful little shops. There's a hat shop, um, wonderful restaurants here. There's a boutique hotel here. It's just a great little place. So I have taken you from Queenston down along the Niagara, beautiful Niagara Parkway to the town of Niagara-on-the-Lake where I showed you the Niagara Pump House, the art gallery that I love to be a part of, um, I teach classes at. I've shown you around uh, Niagara-on-the-Lake, the Main Street and the beauty of that place. And now uh, then I took you to 13th Street Winery where you were able to see Tia, but also the other artwork of uh, that they have there, the gallery. Well, I didn't show you into the gallery, but I've showed you some of the artwork that he has on his property. And uh, I showed you the village of Jordan and uh, that beautiful little treasure in the heart of Niagara. You've seen some vineyards um, 
I just, I wanted to be able to share with you a bit about Niagara because I love this place. I think it is one of the most beautiful areas in uh, Canada. Well, not maybe not in Canada. Canada has a lot of beautiful places, but definitely in the, uh, in the Ontario, Niagara is gorgeous. And I love the people of Niagara. We are so blessed to have a wide ethnicity of people and all that has, made for an area that is full of charm and character. But now I'm going to bring you to 4090 19th Street and my studio. This is where my studio is. You'll notice that we have a very long driveway. But at the end of the driveway near the road is this sculpture here. This is one of my absolute favorites and it's a highlight of the village in which I live, Jordan Station. This sculpture, I love this sculpture. It, for me, it captures the heart of childhood. Um, it's a brother pushing his sister on the swing, taking the time out of his activities to push his sister on the swing. I used to have a, a skateboard leaning up against that tree, but uh, that is no longer there. Somebody wanted it, obviously. Um, but yes, so this is 4090 19th Street in the village of Jordan Station, Ontario. Thank you so much for taking this journey with me today, and I'm excited to share with you a bit more about Paverpole Niagara, what I do and what I love. That is gorgeous. Not only the place, that sculpture is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> so, so tell me, in that sculpture, uh, uh, what did you use as the core? Is it, did you use a mannequin or built out of aluminum? What was the process? <laughs> Most of it was aluminum. Um, oh. It was, a, of course, you have to keep, make sure that the foundation is super, super strong and sturdy. Um, and it's very, very important. Um, and then, yeah, I used copper tubing, copper wire, chicken wire, um, old pillows. I took out the stuffing out of the old <laughs> pillows. Oh, awesome. <laughs> it's all about recycling, right? Yes. Um, and then the the clothing, uh, an old pair of running shoes. The little girl is wearing an old, they're actually both wearing old pair of running shoes. Um, uh -huh. The little girl has her shoelace untied. Just little details yes. like that make it extra special. That's uh, and then the faces, uh, I actually <laughs> uh, found that one of them, the little boy is my nephew. And uh -huh. the little girl is the uh, the granddaughter of a friend of mine. So they graciously gave me their, sat very, very patiently while I made a mold of their Ooh. faces. Ooh, wow. That's so awesome. That is so awesome. <laughs> I have a few comments and questions for you. Jesse is saying, I have uh -huh. large natural coral pe pieces from Florida. I would like to cover them in bronze power pole. Can I paint directly onto the coral? I would like to avoid using fabric as it will cover the small holes and textures of the coral, but need the items to be outdoor and durable. Okay, yes, you can paint the coral, you can uh, dip, probably dip the coral into the power pole and let it dry. Power pole is wonderful because it'll adhere to any natural fiber. So the one thing it won't adhere well to is nylon and plastic. So coral being natural, Go for it and have fun. Oh, nice, nice. I can see how beautiful it's going to be. Connie Kretofu yeah, is saying, sure. Tamara is an excellent teacher as well. Lori is saying, how Thank much you. weight does power pole add? I wonder if this product could be used for tabletop or rod puppets, or would they be too heavy for a puppeteer to manipulate? And would it hold up to use and stress of puppeteering? Oh, it is perfect for puppets. Uh, highly encourage you to use it. It's very, very lightweight. Um, it would be like a paint, basically, but it gives it the durability. Uh, so absolutely use it for the puppets and have fun. <laughs> Brenda is saying Tia is gorgeous and Sandra is saying Tia is a masterpiece. I've seen her live. She's huge. Very cool. And we have a hello from Romania as well. So Tamara, can you show us the mask that you, you are going later to show as a tutorial? Absolutely. So this here is a mask, the mask. It's nice. done using the, um, I have to figure out how to do the angles here. That, that is good. Uh, 
But yeah, so um, it's done using the peach colored power pole. And I've also used the uh, relief decoration that you can see here to give it the, the texture um, on the piece. So I love relief decoration. I'm going to be demonstrating that. Relief decoration is actually, it's a tree bark. So it's a fiber from a tree that has been made into a, a, uh, it's a mesh. No, it's not mesh, even a mesh. Yeah. It's a fiber. It's a fiber. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Very good. And so. we want to see more of your pieces. Show us more. We are excited to see. Hmm. Ah, okay. Which one? So I'm going to show you. This is, this is a fun little project. It's a wine bottle scarf. Um, it's great to use a little jewelry, costume jewelry that you might find at a thrift store or that you might have sitting in your drawer. And uh, I love giving that as a, as a gift with a wine bottle. So uh -huh. you can see how I, I've taken that apart and it just goes on there. Instead of putting it in a bag, I'm from wine country, so this is a nice little add-on. So uh, let's see. This here is um, one of my Christmas time uh, projects. It's a Santa mask. So uh, you can see this is just done using wool. It's soft. It has not been dipped into the paper pole, nor has his beard. It's just, uh, This is silk. So again, using a face mold and I build up the cheeks and it makes a wonderful little um, very cool Christmas decoration. So that's one. Now behind me, um, this here is Abram and I use the for here I use the art stone and this is a um, a piece of fabric that was a cotton knit with a very loose weave and I did that for his the to drape on. Very cool, very cool. Now Connie said that you were an excellent teacher. So I want to know in your career with Paver Paul, uh where do you sell your pieces if you sell them online in galleries? Uh what are the outlets that you put them? And of course if you teach, tell us a little bit about that. Okay. So I think my most enjoyable way of uh, selling my pieces and promoting Paverpool Niagara, promoting Paverpool as a whole, is at art shows. I love to be there. I love to be able to talk to people, to um, tell them exactly what Paverpool is. Uh, I find personally that putting it in a gallery, as wonderful as that is, it doesn't explain what Paverpool is. People don't know. So for instance, the piece that I have sitting at the end of my driveway, people will drive by and actually think that's bronze. Uh -huh, they don't understand sure. that it's fabric sculpting. <laughs> yes. So yes. it's nice to be able to explain it. I also love to tell people that this is something that they can do themselves. It, it's not difficult. Um, so I, I invite them to come to a class and do things for themselves. I love teaching. I love just helping people to make their something that they can brag about. I always say at the beginning of every class, my goal is that they walk out of the door with a piece that they have bragging rights to. So that uh -huh. if people ask them, where did you get that? You could say, I made it. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my goal. I want them to be excited and proud. I love that. I love that. And, and uh, here uh, we have Sally Mason asking, if Paverpo sticks only to natural products and yet we can paint it on mask and tape, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. You can paint it on masking tape, but it does need multiple uh, coats to adhere. And the best thing to do on masking tape is the first coat I always paint with just Paverpool and the second coat I will paint on uh, Paverpool mixed with a little bit of Paverplast to give it a little bit more durability on the Paverpool, on the, pa on the masking tape, sorry. So for example, how long have you had uh, your outside sculpture there? Uh, that has been outside for three years, I think. Nice. And, yeah. and the temperature in Niagara, uh, how does it vary from summer to winter? Oh, uh, okay. Can I give it to you in Celsius? <laughs> yes, of course you can. <laughs> okay. In the summer, it can get really, really hot and humid. Uh, we can get like two days ago, we had humidity was at 36 degrees. Uh -huh. So that being said, what happens with Paverpool in heat is it gets soft. It doesn't lose its shape, 
but it just gets soft. So um, I've told people that if they make a sculpture and they want to just tweak it a smidgen, warm it up, heat it up either with your hands or with a warm blow dryer, and you can just kind of manipulate it a little bit um, very, very, very carefully. But that's, uh, Power Pool will is, um, gets soft in the heat, and in the winter, it gets very, very difficult. Uh, not difficult, very, very uh, stiff, very hard. Mm -hmm. um, and in Niagara, I would say the coldest it'll get in the winter time is about minus 13, Ooh. minus 10. Okay, that's pretty cold to me. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Bree is asking, Tamara, what are you you're using in the face mode, Plaster of Paris? Yes, I'm using Pastor Paris. I use a mold that I just bought off of Amazon mm -hmm. and uh, I use that for all my faces. Yeah, Pastor Paris. Okay, uh, so you have prepared for us also a studio tour, correct? A very short one, yes. <laughs> yes, I'm excited to see how it is there. So let's, let's go inside Tamara's studio now. Welcome to my studio. This is what greets customers as they come in. I just love this view and I am very, very blessed I live here. But this is the entrance to my studio. And here you have it. So I have been blessed with a wonderfully huge uh, workspace. This is some of my pieces where I have them displayed. Some of the different pieces that I've got available. And this is where my supplies are for selling to my customers. And then here is my storage closet where I have all of my supplies stored to be able to sell to customers and to ship out. It's been a it's great little sp space and it serves me well. So once again, my studio and my workspace. That's a pretty big one. I like it. It is. <laughs> so we were talking about the classes. How many people usually uh, do you take in one class? I have taught a class as big as 14. Wow. Everybody yeah. making a figure. Ooh. Everybody making um, a heron, like you see here. The guy. big one. Wow. The big one. So <laughs> that is, that's because I have a space big enough for that. So uh -huh. I've been very fortunate. Um, yeah, I, I like that. I, I just love teaching. So yeah, I can teach as many. I'll do three to 14, <laughs> not during COVID, uh, not during COVID. So, so how are things now there in Niagara? Is everything open? Are you, are you planning on having in-person classes right now or we'll have to wait a little no, bit unfortunately, more? Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, Ontario is not open yet. Um, probably, uh, I don't know. I don't yeah. know when it will open uh -huh. up yet they they say it all things will start to open up in about two to three weeks um but uh, as far as the in-class teaching i don't think that will be possible until august september i'm thinking yeah yeah i i think that's pretty much the average um, i mean here in america it is opening up but i think i've seen a few groups for example a few guilds they're getting back to get together outside usually but I think the, the classes in itself will take a few more months. Uh, it's just the nature of the time we live in. But whenever it is open again, don't forget, uh, Power Pole Niagara, you see at the bottom of the, the video, wherever you're watching, powerballniagara.com is Tamara's website. So not only uh, she'll be able to provide you with product, but you know, keep your eyes open for when in-person classes start because they, there's, I love in-person classes. Don't get me wrong. We do a lot of, you know that, a lot of courses online and I like that though. That's right. Too, but the feeling of being together with people and you know, hands dirty with whatever product you're using is really cool. Um, 
Jesse is asking, if pepper ball gets soft in the heat, could there be an issue keeping an outdoor sculpture clean? Can it be washed? Yes, uh, you can wash it. Um, I've washed my sculptures with soap and a brush and then just hosed it down. Nice. You do want to spray the sculptures be, when you put them outside. Um, before going outside, they have to cure indoors for a full two weeks. Then you could spray them with an outdoor varnish or use the Josephine varnish that Pavre, we sell from Paverpool. You can brush that on, which is a very, very good varnish, by the way. Um, uh, but you want to do that in between 15 degrees Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius. You don't want it too, too hot to be able to varnish it. So I know 15 and Celsius. And then it's good. Is... And you could just. Sorry. Sorry, that you could just uh, reapply the varnish every year or two. Okay. So you do varnish all your outside sculptures? Yes. Okay. Uh, I was going to mention uh, 15 Celsius. I know it's 50. Uh, Fahrenheit, so that gives you a clue. But you can always Google, it's the easiest part here. Uh, does pepper pole get sticky when the weather is hot and humid? I have been asked yeah. for a sculpture that will be for an indoor swimming pool area. No, it will not get sticky, no. But again, you do wanna make sure that it is cured before you go into that really hot and humid okay. space, like an indoor pool. I think that's the the number one uh, characteristic of th this medium uh, is the fact that we can put outdoors, right? That creates so many possibilities for sculptors. <laughs> and let's face it, a lot cheaper than trying to put a bronze statue outside, right? It won't rust, it won't discolor. It's just amazing. <laughs> yeah. Tamara, we want to see more pieces that you have created. Do you have more there to show <laughs> us? Uh -huh. Um, let's see. Okay. You have a tall lady be behind you too. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I've been ignoring her. Oh, this is, um, this is one of my most popular classes that I teach as well. And when I do art shows these, I can't keep them in stock. So these are just garden angels. Um, people love to have them in their gardens a lot, or either that or the heron that I showed you earlier. So yeah, so the garden angel, it's done using, it's created using cheesecloth for the wings wow. uh -huh. and um, an old bed sheet for the, the dress. And uh, the rest is wire and aluminum foil. And the, okay. the head, I just use a, an egg that I get at the dollar store. Or oh, one of the- buy it in bulk. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. That's very and then cool. what I did on this one as well is this here has a, um, a, an old tablecloth in it, a crocheted tablecloth, mm. and it had a big wine stain on it. So the ta as a tablecloth, again, it was totally useless. You don't uh -huh. want to put it on the table anymore. But so I used it for uh, enhancing in the, a little piece in the dress. Nice, nice. That's one of the things that attracts me the most is the fact not only that we can recycle. I know for some of us, we don't care about recycling, but I think it's repurposing what we have before putting yeah. outside, but putting, leaving away. And the, the fact that we can get things that have meaning to us, like for, for example, a doily that you inherited from a grandmother or somebody in your family, yeah. and you can repurpose and make that uh, available to everybody that sees the piece, right? Instead of putting on a drawer and forgetting about it. Absolutely. That's cool. So uh, Brina is asking, can you leave a sculpture outside with no varnish on it? Yes, you can. Um, I just wouldn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just, I just, I, you know what, just that extra layer of protection on it is not a bad thing. That's yeah. Yeah, it doesn't hurt, yeah. right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So you have prepared a tutorial for us. Do you mind showing the piece once again before we go into the sure. tutorial? Look at so this, there we go. beautiful. We're learning how to make um, this beautiful mask. So what do you say if we watch that now? Excellent, let's go awesome, for it. Awesome, awesome. And you guys, this is your last chance uh, to ask questions to Tamara. So while you, you watch the tutorial, if anything pops into your mind, use the chat box or the comment box, wherever you're watching, we are monitoring. And then when the tutorial is finished, I'll come back and ask her the questions.
Let's watch. I'm excited to share a technique with you today. So one of the things that I love to do and love to make is masks. I love the face masks. It's one of my more popular classes that I teach, number one, because it's easy. Uh, I teach kids classes in this. It's something that a child can do, and uh, it's a lot of fun, and it uh, creates some beautiful pieces. So these, this is some of the pieces that I've got here. So this one, for instance, um, I don't know how well you can see it's black, but um, this is one using a black power pole and um, I used some costume jewelry so um, this is a great project for being able to use some of great grandma's costume jewelry that you know you'll never wear again but you definitely do not want to throw it out because it holds sentimental value so this is a piece that you can use that on so that's one of them and then this is the kind of the one that I'm going to demonstrate today, except I'm not going to be using the gray like I did here. This one is gray with uh, dry brushing of uh, purple in it. But what I used in here is called relief decoration. You can see that textured part right here. That's called relief decoration. It's a power pole product, and I will be explaining that in a moment with you, or to you. So uh, what we're going to be using though, this is similar to like you might have seen the leather masks from Italy. Um, this is not going to be that. We are going to be using t-shirts. We didn't have to kill a cow. We had to kill a cotton plant or I don't know how cotton grows for you in the US. You may know that a little bit better than I do. So what we need is first off is a 100% cotton t-shirt. What we're going to need today is relief decoration. That is going to be something different than I'm going to be doing today. It's actually a tree bark, um, but it's made into a fabric. We're going to be using just a small portion of it. This is kind of what it looks like. It's a little bit bigger than this. It's actually 12 inches by about approximately 18 inches in size. That's how it comes. We're also going to be using three of the triangles that we cut out of the t-shirt. Okay, so we only need three of them. We'll be using a thousand, a 500 to a thousand gram container of the uh, peach colored power pole. You'll need a bucket of warm water just to be able to clean your brush in afterwards. And then you will need a, a brush and you will need a face mold. So I do sell um, most of these products. I sell the face mold, the power pole, of course, and the relief decoration. I have given the face one coat of the uh, peach colored power pole already. I'm going to give it one more, hence the reason that the brush is in the plastic bag, just so it won't dry out between coats. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly brush on uh, the last, the final coat onto the face. You'll see that I'm, to do that you're going to use long strokes, being careful not to let it pool in the eyes and around the nose which will make it to uh, drip and you want it to have as smooth a finish as possible. So I'm just giving it nice long strokes to evenly cover around the face, okay? So I'm just getting rid of all those little air bubbles in the eyes and around. There we go. You want a nice smooth finish on it. So, so that went really, really quick and then I'm going to put my brush into the water. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this uh, relief decoration up into, I like to use long narrow triangles. So I'm just going to cut that. John, it doesn't have to be a perfect cut by any means. So I'll just use two of them like that. So I've got two pieces like this, okay? And then my three, I've got a little scrap here I might use as well. Okay, so I'm gonna put my gloves on. You do not necessarily have to work with gloves. Power pole is non-toxic, so it won't harm you if you work without gloves, but I just like to work with gloves because it just protects my hands. Um, they tend to get very, very cracked working with liquids all the time like that. So, okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do, it does not matter if the uh, first layer is wet or the second layer of power pole on the face is wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my triangle into the power pole. I put it into a little bit larger bucket so it's easier to work with. Making sure that the, the uh, fabric is entirely saturated by the fa uh, power pole. And then I'm going to wring it out. It's 
very liquidy, the Power Pole. Again, Power Pole is totally non toxic. It's environmentally friendly and it's weatherproof as well. So, this piece could go outside if you wanted it to underneath in a porch or on a fence or wherever you'd like it to go. So, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to use the longest length of the, the triangle and I'm going to wrap that around the face. So I like to use these points here as well just to use giving it texture and drape. So it's just going to move around. You can give it a little bit of a scrunching. Don't spend a whole lot of time on that yet because we'll be doing that in a moment. So then we I'm going to do my second piece. Oh, another thing that is handy to have is a large barbecue skewer, like a wooden skewer. You can later on, um, as you're, uh, when you're done, you can use the skewer stick to give it texture and move your pieces a bit, if you like. So I'm just doing the second piece. Wipe the excess off of your gloves because it is very drippy, power pole. Okay, and now this piece is going to be placed in a slightly different position than the other one, just so that it's giving it a different feel. Again, using the points, I love using, I'm all about texture and, and giving it movement that way. So I just let it drape like that. Okay, I'm going to be using now, I've got two pieces of the t-shirt on, I'm going to use the uh, relief decoration. So I'm going to dip it in and then I'm going to simply squeeze it out. I'm not going to wring it out, I'm going to squeeze it out. The reason I'm doing this is because the relief decoration is actually very fragile once it gets wet. Okay, so I'm just going to um, play with that and just kind of give it some wiggle. You can do this, soften it up. Actually, I would have recommended, I forgot to do that. Soften it up before you actually di uh, dip it into the paper pole. So you just soften it up by just moving it like, like this. Okay. So you'll see how it, it's actually, it's so fragile. It gives, uh, it'll be, develop holes in it which I kind of like, and you'll see that the it's tearing and getting really thin, okay? See how that looks almost raggy, okay? So I'm gonna take that piece and I'm going to place it on the mask. I find that every mask that I make turns out totally different, and I love that about about this. There's You, can, you can't really plan it, it's just how it works, which is a lot of fun. Okay, that one, that piece just tore right off, so I'm just gonna add it somewhere in here. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a third piece. I'm gonna just loosen it up before I do it, dip it into the paper pole. So I'm just kind of giving it a little bit of stretch and movement, softening it up, because it is quite stiff. There we go. It's just a little bit softer, a little bit easier to work with, especially around the edges. They're a little bit thick, so I'm going to dip it in. And wring it out. Or not wring it out, sorry. I apologize. We're not wringing it. We're going to squeeze it out. Okay. Some people have just placed the uh, relief decoration on a table and painted the paver pole onto it on both sides. You can do that as well. There's different options. Okay. So again, giving it some stretch, putting some holes in it, pulling it apart. You can even place it over the face if you like a little bit. This will dry rock hard. Okay, so then I've got the final piece of 
t-shirt and again dip it into my copper pole make sure that it's totally saturated and then wring out the excess power pole back into the bucket. I'm running low on a little bit. Again, take my longest length. So this is going to be kind of layered on top of the existing of a little bit on top of the relief decoration, but it gives it uh, layers, and I like that as well. And there we have it. So you can just see how I'm placing that. I'll give you a better picture in a moment. You can twist it. Uh, let the relief decoration come out. And there you have her, she's done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let her dry for two days on this board, this plastic, oh, I didn't tell you about that, sorry. My apologies, I forgot about the board. So what I did was I took a board and a cardboard piece and I covered it with plastic. That way I can keep her on there for the two days and allow her to dry, because Paver Pool will not adhere to plastic. Uh, so I can just take her right off after the two days. And then I'm going to put her onto a cookie sheet or an oven rack to allow her to finish drying. But you can just kind of see, I'm just gonna hold up her nose just so she doesn't slide down, but uh, oh, she's doing pretty good. So that is the mask. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give me a, send me a quick message. I've got to have, ha Sorry, I'd be glad to answer any questions you have might have on this. I do sell a kit containing all of the products that you would need for this, mine is, that you wouldn't have at home. So the Paver Pole products. So I have a kit for you, including the mask, the Paver Pole, and the relief decoration if you, should, if you should choose to do that. Like I said, you can also use uh, some heirloom jewelry if you like. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I would love to hear how you make out when you do make this, okay? Take care and blessings. Very cool, very pretty. So, a uh, few questions for you. Let me put it the right place here. Um, Tamara, do you have a special method of storing all your scrap? <laughs> Mine is a mess, I know how that works. <laughs> I try to be very organized. So, oh. I have numerous, I, I like the IKEA method. <laughs> So I have a uh, little, the drawer, the square drawers that fit in the Ikea shelving unit. And um, so, yes, I have it organized. I have t-shirt strips. I have t-shirt um, scraps. Um, I have a drawer, a bucket for bed sheets or sheets. Um, yeah, I try to organize and label everything so that it's quick and easy. Wow. I'm so not like that. But I enter my, my studio and I think, I so need somebody that is organized to come here. <laughs> Sandy is asking, can you use power pole to create an outdoor waterfall? Will water affect the power pole or the va varnish? Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. So basically because the constant water on it uh, no, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Uh, Brenda, do you ever build these masks onto a canvas? Yes, I do. Yeah, I've had a few pieces like that. Um, do you have any there? I do, but I have to stand up and get it. Oh, okay. We saw, yeah, you can do that. And why you do that, we saw one actually when you did the studio tour. 
uh, I could see before you enter the the products closet, you, we yes. can see that there was one there, beautiful one. And you can Thank use you. this time to look at the other pieces in the background. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. So, so this one is on. This was actually, and this is what's cool too. It's all about recycling. Um, it was an old, old print painting that I purchased at a thrift store. So I just covered the painting up. And uh, so I got the canvas for a dollar. So nice. And you have some texture on that canvas. So that's the art stone. Uh, yes, no, there, uh, yes, there's texture on it. That is the art stone that you see on the canvas itself. And then here again, I used a, a piece of uh, a lace that I put on the face. Yeah. Beautiful. And then here is art stone as well. So yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, Nadine, Nadine is asking, how did you attach the jewelry on the mask that is on the cover of the class? That is actually, you just stick the jewelry right on. You just power pull acts as a glue. So the jewelry will stick on there. Very cool. So it's, I put it on while it's wet. Jesse is saying, can I mix paint pigments into clear power pole? I am an artist and like to mix my own paints. Yes, you can. You can mix paint uh, pigments with it. For sure. Go for it. Have fun. I've done some amazing work that way. Amazing Very pieces. Good. Tamara, any, any final words for our people here today? Um, you know what? I just want to encourage you to give PowerPole a try and just have fun experimenting with it. Um, the, the, the things that you can do with it are, are so vast and limitless. Uh, mm -hmm. Just give it a shot. It's an amazing product. The fact that it's non-toxic, uh, environmentally friendly, uh, the, yeah, the sky's the limit. I'm excited to see what will happen in the years to come with what people can do with power pool uh, if you are interested in uh, receiving uh, my newsletter uh, or any of the power pool instructors newsletters you can just send them a message and they could probably they will be able to put you on their email list uh, for myself if you want to get my emails uh, you could just sign up at powerpoolniagara.com and uh, i can let you know when my classes start up again if you live in the niagara region of course um, or somewhere close by. But uh, anyways, like I said, Powerpole is an amazing product. Uh, it's revolutionary. So that's cool. Have fun. Uh, there is no reason why we cannot plan our summer trip to Niagara and take a course, <laughs> right? <laughs> Just cross. And there you go. And when you say immense, I think, yes, the, the, the possibilities with this, like Jesse, for example, uh, is using whatever products they, they use, whatever paints they use, and they can come and yeah. test and try. And then suddenly they will see, oh, I can incorporate this with what I make and give my, my turn on this and my story to, to the pieces using this, right? Absolutely. That's so cool. Yeah. So, so again, fun. to reach Tamara, powerpoleniagara.com is the best place for you to go. Don't forget to sign up for the newsletter because, yes, I think, I think it's very important uh, to be in touch with as many artists as you can because that's sure. really, you know, you understand there is really a, a, a worldwide audience of people that think like you right and they they create like you do probably they are even wired mentally wired like you are you know having ideas all the time and trying new things so it is important for us to be in touch with as many artists as we can but especially uh you know get information get inspiration get get uh, you know those tidbits tips that you can incorporate in whatever you do so do sign up for her newsletter and if you know other distributors we have a whole uh, line of interviews at pavermondo.com that you can not only watch but get in touch with them as again uh, again and and get their newsletters or whatever they produce 
Uh, if you're interested in products in the US, powerpoamerica.com. If you are in any other country, go to powerpoll.com, click on distributors. There's a list there uh, for you to, to get the products and give it a try. They, they are not expensive. You can start with some of them actually with a bottle and try it out and then see what you can do. Tamara, I want to thank you so much for your time and being here with us and inspiring us with your sculptures and showing the beautiful, beautiful place where you live. Thank you. It has been my pleasure. So thank you very much, Shahar. And uh, for everybody who's watched, thank you for taking the time. It's, to, it's uh, been really, really fun. Be thank you so much. And of course, thank you for being here with us. And again, this stays whatever you're watching, which means that you can rewatch or you can tell other people to come and watch. You know, you may know some artists or some people that are just thinking, how do I express myself? Maybe this interview will make a whole difference for them. And don't forget to join me next week. Next week, we are going to Australia, Brown Stewart, and we are going to be visiting not only the country, but the beautiful pieces that the artist makes. Uh, that interview will start at 4 p.m. next Thursday, okay? Because 4 p.m. here is 8 a.m. there in Australia. So that's how we can accommodate those countries. So don't forget to join me at pavermondo.com uh, next week, Thursday, I think it's June 3rd, if I'm not wrong, 4 p.m. And we are going to go to Australia and see even more exciting pieces. I mean, think about this. We've been, uh, right now, I think this is the fifth interview. And think, look at all, all the artists that we have interviewed and how different they express themselves with this, uh, with similar mediums. Of course, each one uses different things, right? Bad sheeting, styrofoam, wire, whatever it is. And it's just do do dropping the quality of their work and how different they are. Because at the end of the day, we are all storytellers, aren't we? We are visual storytellers. And we may use exactly the same medium but the story will come out in a very different way. So do watch the former interviews and be here with me next week as well. Thank you so much for the privilege of your time. See you next Thursday.